Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Of all the planets in the inner solar system, the planet Mars may pose the most tantalizing mysteries. In the early 1970s, when the Mariner 9 spacecraft captured the most detailed images of the planet to that time, scientists' ideas about Mars have needed constant revision. A planet that was thought to be long geologically dead was engulfed in massive dust storms, and its surface revealed dramatic and unexpected scarring, which remains mysterious to this day. For decades, the chief principles of the Thunderbolts project have proposed that extraordinary events shaped the Martian surface, events which they contend were recorded in the myths and legends of ancient man. In part one of this two-part presentation, Physicist Eugene Bagashoff reopens the Martian mysteries. In the following material, I'd like to discuss some of the papers about Mars that has been released in recent years in order to see if their results might be reinterpreted in the light of the electric universe paradigm. So the first paper that I want to mention discusses the peculiar structure in the Martian equatorial region called the Medusae Fossae Formation, or MFF. The purpose of the paper essentially is to report on the density measurements of this structure. To measure it, the team of researchers utilizes the altimetry data from Mars Orbital Laser Altimeter Experiment, or MOLA, on board of the Mars Global Surveyor spacecraft, and also some of the most recent models of the Martian gravitational field used by NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The results that they get in the end are pretty interesting. In particular, they report that the density of MFF region should be quite low, only about 1700 kilograms per cubic meter. It is possible, they state, that such an unusually low density is the result of mixing of the rock with large amounts of ice, more than one half in volume. However, the problem with that assumption is that the previous radar scanning of the area performed by Mars's experiment on board of the European Mars Express orbiter rules out any significant concentration of ice in the area. And it would also be hard to expect much ice in the equatorial region, which on average receives the most heating from the Sun. So the conclusion that the authors arrive at is that the low density of Medusae Fossae formation should be the consequence of it being made of a highly porous rock. When compared to some of the minerals on Earth, it seems that the porosity of rock in MFF might range from about 18 to about 51 percent, and it is not entirely clear how such a peculiar formation might have appeared in the first place. The authors suggest that, quote, the MFF was deposited by pyroclastic eruptions, end of quote. But at the same time, they are baffled by its huge extent and total mass, noting that it is two orders of magnitude greater than the largest pyroclastic deposits on Earth, which would make it the largest in the whole solar system. I should add here that this area doesn't seem to have any indications of volcanic activity even in the past in the first place. It's quite removed from the hypothetical volcanically active Tharsis region and even the hypothetical volcano Olympus Mons. But of course, in the electric universe, not only volcanism might affect the geological processes, but also the external electromagnetic influences. So perhaps the very appearance of the MFF and its low density and high porosity is somehow related to the possible planetary-wide catastrophes in the Martian past. For now, let's remember that thought and take a look at some other recent papers. In particular, let's examine the paper released in February 2019 in the journal Science. Here the authors report the results of quite a clever application of Curiosity rover telemetry data to measure the surface gravity in the Gale crater where the rover is situated. Curiosity is equipped with accelerometers and gyroscopes that are normally used for navigation and attitude determination, but the researchers have been able to use the data from these instruments for the extraction of the gravitational acceleration. More than 700 data samples were used, corrected for the possible interference from planetary rotation, altitude and pressure, and such. What they got in the end was the gravitational gradient, that is the change of acceleration with height, that was smaller than expected. And they've been able to infer from that data the most probable density of rock that Curiosity was traveling on top of. 
Now the most interesting part is that the density of this rock was almost exactly the same as the one reported for the MFF in previous paper, namely 1680 kilograms per cubic meter. And in the very same way, they conclude that the reason for such a low density should be very high porosity of the rock in Gale Crater, most likely around 40%. Even more so, they hypothesized that the initial porosity might have been higher at the time of the formation of Gale Crater, and could have been as high as 55 to 70 percent. Now here I wish to mention that the Gale Crater is supposed to be an impact feature, but what if it has different origin? Electric Universe Paradigm brings into light the possibility that such formations might occur during extremely powerful plasma discharges to the surfaces of planets, during hypothetical cataclysmic events such as extreme solar flares and CMEs and or close planetary encounters. So in my opinion it might be the case that both Medusae Fosse formation and Gale Crater appeared on the surface of Mars because of some sort of electric erosion processes. The fact that the density of rock in both of these formations is almost exactly the same indicates on possible similarity of their origin. Yet the MFF is thought to be a result of some volcanic activity where the stuff essentially emerges from down below and Gale Crater is thought to be the result of an impact event where the stuff should have fallen down from above and it should be evident that the result wouldn't look the same. Plus we have the 5.5 kilometer tall Mount Sharp sitting right in the center of Gale Crater, the origins of which are still the subject of debate. Both the MFF and Gale Crater are located near the equator, which is quite peculiar, as this seems to be a special area on most occasions, and might be significant in any type of plasma discharging events. In this regard, I keep thinking of similar equatorial anomalies on other bodies, such as the Earth's equatorial plasma fountain, Jupiter's equatorial ionic ribbon, dark equatorial regions on Titan and Pluto, Iapetus equatorial ridge, and others. On Mars, this area is doubly interesting, as it separates the low and flat northern hemisphere from the high and bumpy southern. And here I should mention the other paper that has been released in July of 2018. Here the authors compare data from various spacecraft and rovers to study the chemistry of Martian dust with respect to the chemistry of the underlying soil. What they found was that the elemental composition of Martian dust is somewhat different from the composition of the soil, at least on average. In particular, the dust seems to have a significantly higher content of chlorine and sulfur, and not only that, but their relative ratio in the dust all over the planet is also relatively constant. In terms of molar content, the ratio of sulfur to chlorine seems to be around 3.7 globally. What's more important is that the researchers identified an area on Mars where the soil itself has the same sulfur and chlorine content. And that area is Medusae Fosse formation. So their conclusion is that it is the erosion of this formation that has filled the Martian atmosphere with most of its dust and eventually covered most of the planet with it. Given what I've noted above on the potential importance of equatorial area during any kind of plasma discharging, in my opinion it is not impossible that this erosion might have occurred electrically. I should note here that Valles Marineris structure is also located in the equatorial region, right to the east of Medusae Fosse formation. Although I also have a suspicion that the erosion of Medusae Fosse formation might continue to this day in the form of much weaker discharge, but so far I have no evidence to present in support of this idea. I believe now it's a good time to remember another item from the Electric Universe pool of ideas, namely the statement that asteroids and comets might be the fragments of planets torn away by electrical activity during catastrophic events in the past of the solar system. It has been known for some time that pieces of Mars might even land on Earth. At the moment there are at least 227 meteorites identified as originating from Mars. It is supposed that these rocks receive their initial velocity from another impactor that lands on Mars and throws them into interplanetary space. But what if the process of initial removal of the material is electric? In fact, some of the asteroids themselves in the solar system have recently been identified as originating from Mars, well in line with the scenarios proposed by the EU catastrophism. 
There is even strong evidence in favor of the hypothesis that Martian moons Phobos and Deimos originate from Mars itself. Remembering the discussion above about the low density of Gale Crater and Medusae Fossae rocks, I cannot miss the opportunity to speak about the densities of small bodies in the solar system. It is generally assumed that the average density of asteroids should be about 2,000 kg per cubic meter, which is noticeably lower than the density of both Earth's and Mars' crust, and closer to the density of MFF and Gale Crater. The density of comets, however, is even a couple of times lower than that, about 800 kg per cubic meter. What is interesting, however, is that the Rosetta mission, with its brave Philae lander, have been able to determine that the dust-to-ice ratio in the comet 67P nucleus is much higher than was expected, and the low density is the consequence of very high porosity. This kind of reminds something else, right? My hypothesis with regards to that would be that perhaps comets are the result of more violent types of discharges, so that the rock starts to partly boil or being transformed in some other way and becomes more porous in the end. And such more energetic events would also result in a more irregular orbits with higher semi-major axis distance, whereas asteroids might be the result of milder type of discharges and therefore don't demonstrate such a high deviation from the planetary crust in terms of density and also don't move in such eccentric orbits as comets do. So, taking into account the considerations given above, I would suggest to any experimenters trying to reproduce geological formations in the plasma lab to pay more attention to the density of the acquired structures and formations. Perhaps it might be possible to reproduce some of the more porous formations such as rock of the Medusae Fossae formation or even the more highly porous cometary rock. At the same time, I think that the results of the ongoing sample return missions from asteroids such as Hayabusa 2 and Osiris-Rex would show more evidence that the asteroidal rock bears a striking resemblance to the typical planetary crust composition.